Welcome to the Sci, um, welcome to Sci City um, Center for Innovative Thinking here at Yale. Um, I am Matt Gara. I am a new innovation fellow here at Sci City. Um, it's really good to have you here. Um, before we get into this talk by Joe, um, I wanted to, especially with it being Indigenous Peoples Day, um, do a land acknowledgement. So we'll do this. And I apologize in advance uh, for any mispronunciations because I'm still learning um, how to pronounce some of these things and I'm doing my best here. So I apologize in advance. Um, so Yale University acknowledges that indigenous peoples and nations, including the Mohegan, Mashantucket, Pequot, Eastern Pequot, the Shaticoat, um, Golden Hill, Pagasset, Niantic, and the Quinnipiac and other Algonquian speaking peoples have stewarded through generations of the lands and waterways of what is now the state of Connecticut. We honor and respect the enduring relationship that exists between these peoples and nations and this land. So with that in mind, um, I do want to introduce Joe um, Catrino, who is also who's presenting um, here in this Innovation Toolkit series. Um, so Joe is currently the Director of Career Development and, and Special Assistant to the Vice President for Innovation at Trinity College. Um, and previously was the Assistant Dean of Career Development in the School of Communications at Quinnipiac University. Um, he's gonna be talking about giving managing energy, but I will also just let him um, take the floor. And Joe, thank you for being here and thank you for sharing some of your knowledge and wisdom. Uh, thanks, Matt, I appreciate it. It's nice to meet you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, it's nice to see you all uh, via <laughs> Zoom. Um, I feel like that's become our uh, kind of go-to lately. Uh, so tonight I'd, I'd like to talk to you about a few things that we've been doing uh, at Trinity, but also um, what you can do for yourself around, you know, designing your life uh, for a full meaning and purpose. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in and share my slides. And come on. All right. So I'd like to start off, um, you know, with a, with a little, a little story. Um, and, you know, when we, a lot of the things that we've been doing at Trinity around life design and design thinking and managing energy and, and really trying to find that state of flow, uh, we found that there were things we weren't doing really well. And, and one of those is warming up. We would just jump right in uh, to things. <laughs> and so in order to really be successful in, and, um, and get yourself, get your mind going, get that brain working, it's really critical to warm up. And, and so it'll help unlock your, your brain to ideate, ideate for your future selves. Um, just like stretching is important before you go for a run or, or exercising, you start a brainstorm without warming up your mind. If you start your, brain, your brainstorm, you know, warming up your mind and getting the graded juices flowing, the chances of producing fruitful ideas um, you know, are, are obviously higher. So we have to ensure we do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a link excuse me one second in the chat and what i'd like to do is have you all join me on a mural we're going to go on a trip i just dropped that in the chat and what you'll notice is it'll take you into mural which is a is a creative uh, interactive and creative uh, platform that i've been using since we've moved into uh, quarantine and it's allowed for us to do some really cool things. Um, so what you should see is something like this and I see some people, okay, you're all in there. So, okay, great. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a trip. This is our desert island. This is our own private island. You're in the middle of nowhere and you have to bring three things. What are you bringing? So all you need to do is go right in the middle of the page, double click and you'll create a little post-it. You can change the color of your post-it. You can expand the size of your post-it, change it to any color you'd like, and just share what you'd like, whether it's uh, a radio, whether it's food, whatever it is. Just create your three, um, the three things that you're bringing. Just get those creative juices flowing. Remember, you're all, you're an anonymous person here in the system, so there's nothing you need to be uh, uh, worried about. No one knows who you are. And just share with you the three things that you bring on your trip. And so what I'll do is I'll give this about two or three minutes. I'll let you get comfortable in there and, and, and creating your, your post-its. Seeing some great a tarp. Great idea. Solar panels. All right. My favorite person. This is great.
my favorite person, some medicine just in case, and a genie. <laughs> awesome. A violin, a journal, and a pen. Nice. Telescope. Cool. This is great. All right, a couple more minutes. Remember, all you gotta do is just go right on the island, double click, and you'll create a post-it. And then once you create a post-it, just drop it on there. And then if you double click in it, it'll allow you to start po uh, typing. DVD player, cool. A boat, a phone that works, and maybe a satellite phone, okay. And some MREs. A kitten, a dog, partner, water purifier, matches and a knife, a friend. This is great. A few more minutes. I right, finish up those last notes. Guitar matches of my dog, a furry friend, a book and a comfy blanket. Awesome. This is great. All right. Well, thank you all so much for uh, sharing what you would bring on a on a a private island. This was great, and you can see here we got some really good, we got some really cool uh, visuals here. Uh, I personally love this tool. If anybody uh, wants to reach out and and ask questions about uh, Mural and how it's used, please don't hesitate to do that. I love it. It's been great for me in my teaching. Um, and as Matt said, I, I'm the executive director of student success and career development at, at Trinity College. Um, I've been at Trinity College for five years and been um, you know, working with students on their career voyage. And we have really integrated um, design thinking and life design to our curriculum and, and career development especially. And so about three years ago, and actually almost four years ago now, uh, funny how time flies. My boss came up to me one day, and I know a few of you, I notice a few, recognize a few people on here, so if you heard this story, please humor me for a moment. <laughs> uh, my boss came up to me, and he said, Joe, I, would, I need you to read this book. And I said, okay. I always like to read a book. Haven't been able to do too much reading lately because um, just too many things going on, but he handed me this book called Designing Your Life. And I don't know about you, but when your boss hands you a book called Designing Your Life, you start to worry about whether or not you're doing a good job. Um, so I was like, okay, thanks. So what are you saying here? He said, this is an awesome book. And the book is, it is awesome. It's written by Bill Burnett and Dave Evans. Uh, Bill Burnett and Dave Evans are two Stanford for, uh, professors in the D School, which falls under the engineering department at uh, Stanford. And these two gentlemen are designers by trade. And they worked at um, Apple, um, EA, which is a um, video game um, company. And so these, these guys are lifetime designers. And, and what they did was they wrote this book and it came out in late 2016, early 20, uh, late 2016. Um, and in early 2017, it sparked a movement. And the movement that was sparked was that this book, Designing Your Life, which is 
rooted in design thinking when, and design thinking is what they call really wicked problem solving or creative problem solving, which is where you take the methods and the mindset of designers and you apply it to the problems that we see around us. And so problems like, you know, a, a, an uncomfortable chair or, um, you know, uh, a, a ill-fitting standing desk, these are problems that we see around us. And so designers work in a solutions-based approach to solving those problems. And so um, this is what they did, these two designers, and they essentially took the, and I apologize in advance, I got three kids, so it might be a little people popping in behind me, so I apologize. Um, and so what they did was they took their design thinking approach and they said, well, what's a really wicked problem? Well, I, we think life is a wicked problem. And so they applied it to, they took design thinking and applied it to life and created life design. And so they focused on this human-centered approach. It's all about people. And what they did was they created this, this movement, and then they created a movement to share it. And they created the Life Design Studio for higher ed professionals. And so we at Trinity applied, and, and we were um, one of 65 schools that applied. And actually, Yale was there as well. And we were one of a dozen schools that was chosen uh, to attend the Life Design Studio for higher ed professionals in the summer or in June 2017. And it was an amazing experience. They basically taught you how to take this back and implement it into your programs, your service, your teaching. And we've done just that. And so tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you, um, you know, a little bit about, you know, what this has done for us. But I'm hoping that you walk away with some skills around how you might manage your time or your energy, not your time. I think too many, uh, too often we focus on, I got to manage my time. I only have so much time. But what I would argue is, why are we continuing to do things that suck our energy? Why aren't we thinking about how we can strategize around what gives us energy and coupling that with things that take away our energy and using that in a more effective way? And so we're going to do that a lot. And it starts with focus. But what I wanted to do before we get into this is really give you a taste of, of what life design has become, this life development, what is design thinking, and then we're going to jump into the activities uh, over the next hour or so. And so what they've done, the two Stanford professors, Bill, uh, Bill Burnett and Dave Evans, is they've taken that innovation, the innovative principles of design thinking, and they tied it into the problem of designing your life. And so what we do specifically at Trinity is we help students navigate life, um, how they might vocationally wayfind, which is thinking about careers. We actually help students with the navigation of education, like what major you might be, uh, how might you decide between history and psychology as a major. Um, those are really the fundamental components that we're implementing. We've also changed the way we advise students. We've actually gotten away from advising and implemented a coaching model so that we can make students more proactive um, and inform decision makers about their career so they can design their Trinity experience, but then expand that and design their Trinity experience as an alum, ultimately their career. And so this is what we've implemented at, at Trinity and, and what we're um, continuing to do throughout um, our time. And a, and a better way to think of it is I like to prop up this traditional thinking versus design thinking. It's probably one of my favorite slides because this is where I see a connect for students. Students too many times in this traditional thinking model are always trying to devise this perfect plan while avoiding failure. And I don't know how you do that. I don't think you can do that. There's no perfect plan. And failure is so great. And that's what design thinking does. It embraces that failure because it can inform us. We get something out of that failure. We stumble, we pick ourselves up, we dust ourselves off, and we, then we take a step back and go, what did we just learn here? And we oftentimes, I see this in the career process when we're dealing with students from a student success perspective where we, we handle a lot of like transition. So when, when students come into Trinity, we spend a lot of time with them in the tra transitioning from high school to college student. And then we work with them to transition to post Trinity. And so we deal in a lot of uh, transitions and we find too many times that students aren't trying things. They're too afraid to because they don't wanna fail. And so we really emphasize trying things, AKA prototyping. Uh, so you see hands-on experience and deep user immersion and ongoing process, things we're trying. We're getting ourselves out there. We're getting our hands dirty so that we can learn from some, learn something for ourselves. So again, we can make informed decisions. And so this is the process that we go through. Uh, so design thinking, you may see 
Uh, another step in this, uh, Stanford and, and the stuff that I've been trained on, we typically start with empathy, but there is a step that says accept. And that's really you accepting that there is a problem. And, and ultimately, we, we, we figure that that can couple right in with empathy because you're developing this deep understanding of the challenge. Remember, we're doing creative problem solving. We're doing wicked problem solving. So there's a problem. And so now we got to dig deep and develop what, get a deep understanding of what the challenge is. And then from there, we start to clearly articulate the problem. This is where we really start to shape and mold the hard questions that we want to ask. For example, if I go back to one of the educational uh, examples I used before, we start to shape and define a question is, how might I decide between psychology and history? A really bad question that I see students do is, how might I decide my major? It's way too broad. How are you going to build? How are you, you going to ideate? How are you going to prototype? What I would tell you is if you're deeply understanding yourself and you're developing that self-empathy and self-understanding and having a good self-awareness, you should be able to frame a question that's, how might I decide between X and Y? Deciding, giving yourself a better informed decision. Listen, if those two don't work, it's okay. But you're giving yourself a focused question instead of being out here in this broad term where you're at where Trinity and you're deciding between 41 majors. You can't take 41 classes so you can discover you know, what it is you want to do. We're hoping that you've done some uh, process of elimination so that you can become, you know, a better uh, design thinker in this process by deciding between psychology and history. Once you've designed, once you've decided that and you have framed yourself a good question, now it's time to brainstorm. You're ideating. You're generating potential ideas for you to put into a prototype so that you can go out there and test. And so if we put up on the wall in front of us, how might I decide between history and psychology? And we all brainstorm. We all had these, you know, pads of post-its and, and markers. Okay. And we're up there and we're just writing down, you know, take a class in each boom, uh, talk to alumni, boom, um, talk to faculty, boom, uh, look at, um, you know, uh, occupational, um, opportunities, boom, look at pay scale, boom. And you were throwing up all these ideas. That's what our brainstorming should be. It should be active. It should be building off the ideas of others, silencing the inner critic so that we don't question, oh, this is a dumb idea. All ideas are welcome. Wild ones, crazy ones. The idea is to get all of your ideas out there because you can't figure out the best one or the most suitable one or the most interesting one without all of them out there. So you want all those ideas. So we just encourage all these ideas. And then the student text steps back and they have this wall of what we just posted up there, you know, 25, 30, 40 ideas, that student now has an opportunity to look at these and say, oh, okay, the idea around prototypes is they're easy, they're cheap, they're measurable, small things. Well, I could take a history class and a psych class next, next semester, that seems pretty easy. It also seems pretty easy to send a note to the chairs of each department and meet with them, they ask them their questions. Again, it's really easy, actionable things that students can now test so that they can decide if this is the right path for them. So using design thinking, and I'm making a very elementary example here to help you all understand what it is. And so what we're gonna do is we, we navigate through these things to help us uh, solve our really wicked problems. And that's ultimately what students are doing. Now, you can't just do that without being in the right mindset. And so these are five mindsets or dispositions you have to maintain as a designer. And number one is radical collaboration. Radical collaboration is so, so critical because this is when we, we wrap, we collaborate with people who don't think like us. These are people that um, have different perspectives, but they give us this um, ability to see blind spots that we normally wouldn't see because they're coming from different perspectives. And too, too many times I see students surrounding themselves with people that think like them. So they're not challenged. So radically collaborating and finding people with different backgrounds and specializations to help you solve problems is critical. Reframing, this is how designers get unstuck. When you reframe the problem, you make sure you're working on the right problem. Don't be afraid to pivot. Don't be afraid to tweak and build and be versatile about what your problems are. If we get to a point where you're like, well, you know, history really isn't an option. So why am I even thinking about history? I don't even like writing. Well that's an easy plug in place. We put something else in there because we were willing to reframe. Curiosity, it makes everything new. It invites exploration. It, ex it, ex it excites us to know that there's a pot potential solution out there. We're trying to design our lives and it's exciting to know what is out there. So it's really critical uh, that you're curious about what's happening out there. 
life design, just like anything life related is it's, it's a process and we have to be mindful that it's a process. I talk a lot of, to students who say, I want to be vice president of sales when I, you know, in my career, da, da, da. Well, we know that's, that's a great goal to have, but there takes baby steps. You have to be an associate. You have to be an assistant director, a director, an assistant vice president. You didn't just run when you were born. You had to learn how to roll over and crawl. It's the same thing. It's a process. And we have to be, we have to have that realization is that it takes time and it's a process that we have to go through. Very similarly to what we're doing when we're evaluating what our potential majors are. And then finally, being biased to action. We gotta be willing to do stuff. We cannot sit around and wait for the perfect plan or the perfect opportunity to emerge. We have to be ready to just do and get ourselves out there and, and try things and prototype and learn. And don't be afraid to fail because we can embrace it and learn a lot from it. So that's sort of the framework and the foundation for what we're gonna talk about tonight. So I just want you to keep that in mind because now we're gonna pivot and we're now gonna focus more on flow and energy. And in flow, there's a uh, famous researcher, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, and he wrote in the psychology of optimal experience. And you'll never see many of my slides have this much text on it, just an FYI, but these are really critical components to have. And so he wrote this book and did his research on flow. And he defines flow as being completely involved in an activity for its own sake. The ego falls away, time flies, Every action, movement, and thought follows inevitably from the previous one, like playing jazz. Your whole being is involved and you're using your skills to the utmost. Csikszentmihalyi continues, to achieve a flow state, a balance must be struck between the challenge of the task and the skill of the performer. If the task is too easy or too difficult, flow cannot occur. The flow state also implies a kind of focused attention. And indeed, it has been noted that mindfulness, meditation, yoga, and martial arts seem to improve a person's capacity for flow. So Cheek Set Me High, you know, um, did his research and essentially found that there's this flow state that we have. It's ultimately when time stands still. When I don't know if anyone has ever been there, but you're when you're doing a task. And you're like, oh my God, I've been doing this for so like for two hours. I didn't even realize the time stands still. You can, you become completely immersed in, in this activity, whatever it is. And so I'm going to show you in, in a second on the next slide about the conditions of flow, but we have this sense of ecstasy. We have this clarity. It's a very calming, serene um, feeling that we have as we're in this state of flow. And Chick Semihai, he did this a ton of research in this area and ultimately came up with that there has to be this balance. And if you look on the, um, that it basically it occurs. And if you look on the curve, you can see that the uh, challenges are on the vertical axis there. And then uh, skills are on the uh, X uh, um, horizontal axis. And what Csikszentmihalyi observed is that like he, he did a, um, his research included like beepers on people to, to measure their flow and how they were behaving while doing different tasks in his research. And he basically, they got in this, that state of flow when they were operating at that balance level. And that balance level is where, you know, the skill and the challenge are, are met. The skill's not too high for the low challenge and vice versa. There was this immediate, this channel that occurred that there was like, you know, the goals were clear, the skills were matching. It, there was immediate feedback and you were hyper-focused on getting it done because you were just in this uh, serene state. And so flows are, flow is, important to understand because if we can figure out what gives us flow, I argue that you need to think about that as you're looking at your energy, which we're going to get to in a few minutes. It's going to be critical to understand what drives you and gives you your flow and puts you in that state so that you can figure out if you're spending enough time, <clears throat> excuse me, or not. And so, um, you know, so when in his research, Chick sent, Chick sent me high, um, you know, uh, basically outlined how to achieve flow and he focused on these six things and so the focus on the body is like the our body has a certain capacity um, for enjoyment and we need to take control of our physical capabilities and understand um, like our level of skill because like, again we have to understand what our skills can do and how they match up with challenges so understanding the focus on our body and what it can do and can't do to, to, to find that um, enjoyment 
And so um, he then suggested, moving into the focus on your mind, he suggested uh, that the normal state of the mind is chaos. Uh, it is rel relatively easy to concentrate when our attention is structured by external stimuli. However, when left to our own devices, the mind reverts to a disordered state. Um, so we're in chaos. So how do we find that calming, um, you know, uh, that calming factor to bring us together um, with our challenges and our skills? And it's important to understand what our mind can do. So he suggests that, and I think I alluded to this in the last slide, that finding ways to be more mindful, like meditation and yoga. Uh, there's lots of mindfulness exercises. There's actually a lot of really good apps out there like Calm that can help you find that uh, to, to quiet your brain and quiet the chaos that's existing in your mind. Um, and so that's, that's really important. Um, memory is also um, important here to find flow because we have to leverage it. Uh, our minds can do only so much and remember so much. And so, um, you know, if we recall the fulfillment of a certain goal, that helps us find flow because we remember, we recall that a certain activity or a certain uh, function provided us with some, again, feeling of that, of that, ex that uh, ecstasy, that serene state, that whatever that enjoyment was, we got from. So being able to recall it um, is, is really, really important. Um, you know, lifelong learning and communication are critical. Um, they are also very writing, especially is, is very helpful as uh, Csikszentmihalyi talks about, because um, you can, you know, it helps you understand past experiences. It helps you be disciplined with expression and helps you provide yourself some feedback. Um, so communication and, and learning are really critical uh, to, to what's happening in, um, you know, in, in the goal of achieving flow. And then last is, um, and I see this all the time is, too many times we get caught up in planning when we forget what's actually happening in front of us. And I did a brainstorming exercise with students today where we miss what we're looking at because we're only looking for something in particular. And how do we succeed if we're only looking for something in particular? We end up missing things. So let's, let's focus on what we're looking at. And so focus on, focusing on the job at hand, focusing on present mind is critical to achieving flow. There's, this is a, an article I found when I, was, when I started to teach this, this area of um, um, energy assessments and flow. <clears throat> There's some really good prompts. And this is the article, it talks about personal growth and how to reach your state of flow. And these are really, really good cues. Um, and I love, I love these cues here. Um, and then, sorry, I got distracted by the chat, just making sure I didn't have any questions. Um, and also, if you have questions, feel free to throw them in the chat or just, you know, raise your hand or, or just speak up. It's, it's fine. Um, this is just, these are things that can help prompt your uh, flow. Again, we talked a lot about uh, a few minutes ago, um, you know, how do you achieve flow? But here's things that, that can help you prompt it. Um, and so, environment is so important. Um, understanding distractions and, um, you, know, you know, do you need music? Do you need a quiet space? Do you need to be, I actually just talked to um, a student of mine who's really concerned because um, we actually moved to completely uh, remote learning at Trinity uh, last week and they closed the library. And he's really concerned because he does not study well uh, in his room. And unfortunately, he doesn't have a lot of, uh, a lot of options to succeed um, <laughs> with, with studying outside of his room, unfortunately. And so he and I are just kind of work on, we actually have a follow-up meeting uh, tomorrow to help him think about what are ways he can improve his current um, study place. And so distractions, internal and external, or just going back to the last slide, is calming that mind, um, understanding what's going on. And, and if you can't focus, maybe it's time to focus on the thing that's distracting you. Um, but again, keeping in mind that it's, we want to stay present. Um, find your biological peak time. Where do you work your best? What time of day? Um, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm a night owl. You know, it's not surprising that you would get an email from me at like 1150 at night or even later. Um, because I understand what my challenges are. I've got three little kids. It's a quiet time for me, and I can get a lot of work done, believe it or not, at that, at that hour. Um, 
you know, but what, think about where you're the best, what time of day. I know there's been a lot of um, like three o'clock in the afternoon, people <laughs> crash. You need that three, you know, that three o'clock coffee or you need that piece of candy um, that gives you a little bump, but find that biological peak time, find out when you're really good because that can help you get to that state. You know, that can help you figure out your energy and maybe be a little bit more productive. Um, you know, music is good. I find music very, um, just in general as, as, life, as life, like I love music, all kinds of music. If I gave you my phone and let you look at my music, you'd be like, wow, you, you literally like everything. Um, but if I'm in my office, <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot listen to music with words because <laughs> I'll sing and I'll sing the whole time and it distracts me from getting anything done. So I've actually found a channel on Sirius XM uh, that's like, like regular pop music, but on a piano or violin and it's awesome. And it's the most soothing thing and it just gets me right in the zone to get things done. Um, so music is really critical, but again, you have to think about that, how that influences you. Does it, it, does it become an external distraction? How does that work? Again, I think going back to the last slide, it's working on one very specific task. We have to stay focused. We cannot uh, find ourselves trying to, mul I think multitasking is, um, has become very distracting. I got to close my email if I really need to get a report done because I get about a hundred plus emails a day. And if I leave it on, it's like, dun, dun, dun. like I just can't. So, um, you know, trying to focus on one task is, is really critical because we want to be present focused. Um, remember the task has to be challenging enough. If we find that it's not, we're bored. And what happens when we're bored, we get distracted. We move on to other things and we don't get it done. And so we have to think about finding tasks that are challenging enough. Remember challenges and skills, they have to meet in order to be in that channel and that flow. Um, we also always have to be goal oriented or have an outcome to that task. It's critical to help you again. We're trying to get into flow here, my friends. And so if I'm not talking about general tasks. I'm trying to get us into that state of flow. And so if it's not challenging enough, we're not going to get in that flow. And if it doesn't have an outcome or a goal, we're not going to be, we're not going to be focused on it. It's just not going to happen. Uh, staying hydrated and, and, and watch your caffeine. I know some of you need caffeine. I'm kind of the opposite. I can drink caffeine right until I go to sleep. It doesn't affect me. Um, but making sure that you are hydrated and that your body, taking care of that body because it definitely ties in with your mind. Um, and then creating a mental cue. When are you done? When are you, uh, you, know, you know, when are you feeling like you're, 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 you're in the right mindset to move on or to slide out of flow? Like what's that mental cue for you? What's that mental cue that gets you back? Find those things that can help you concentrate and get to that task at hand. Okay. So now that we've talked about flow, we, un we understand what flow is. We're matching skills and challenges. We found that window that just like we block everything out. We're just cranking out the tasks and, and it's just feeling good. It's euphoric. It's serene. Now what I want to do is I want you to take that foundation. I want you to slide with me now to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, energy assessment. And this is where we're going to focus on. Um, so we've talked about flow and the experience of flow. And flow is a particular kind of engagement and it's very positive experience and we feel super productive at the end of flow. Um, and so flow is oftentimes connected um, as an energy giving experience. We get energy from it. It doesn't really take away. Um, it, it gets us fired up actually, if you think about it. Um, and so what I want you to do is like, I'd, I'd like you to think about, think about today. How are you feeling today on a Monday? A rainy Monday at that. How's your energy? Just take a, take a second to think and reflect on how your energy is right now. Now think about what's going on in the world. There's a lot going on. So if we're biased to action right now, if we're designers, how can we find things that give us energy? That's what I want you to really think about. Think about your tasks that you complete on a regular basis, your, regu your regular weekly tasks, and how does that affect your energy? For example, I hate laundry. It's a regular weekly task and it drains my energy. It's not fun. But if I put my AirPods in and I listen to music while I'm folding laundry, I don't lose as much energy from it. 
And so what I'm, what I'm saying to you is there are ways to integrate positive energy things, tasks that can tie into things that take energy to make it a more positive experience as opposed to this draining activity that we have to do on a regular basis. And so we have to design ourselves and our, design our lives thoughtfully and, and then think about, you know, again, we're looking for meaning and purpose. We're looking to avoid things that really drain our energy, but there are inevitable things um, that happen. There's a, a book, um, I don't know if anybody's read it, but this, this book um, by John Gordon called The Energy Bus, 10 Rules to Fuel Your Life Work. Um, oops, sorry. Ah. Sorry, little crazy Google slides right now. There we go. 10 Rules to Fuel Your Life Work and Team with Positive Energy. And one of the quotes that stands out, one of the uh, components that we read this actually is a team activity at, at Trinity a couple of years ago. Um, it's a really good book. It's a very easy read. Um, but, but Gordon talks about why energy? Because energy is the currency of personal and professional success today. If you don't have it, you can't lead, inspire, or make a difference. That really resonated with me as I was, um, I was actually just starting to teach energy assessments. And then we read the book and I was like, oh my gosh, which just uh, kind of all came together for me. And so it's really important to understand that energy really drives us. And so today what we're going to focus on is the, are these two areas here, the empathy and the define uh, steps. And these are the steps in the design thinking process. So we're going to develop some empathy for yourself. This is where you're going to dig in and do some self-awareness about what gives you energy and what doesn't, but then it's going to help you define some problems that need solving. That's where you're going to come out of this and say, how might I rethink my weekly tasks? How might I find more energy in what I do on a weekly basis? That's what I want to come out of this, but it has to start with empathy. You really got to dig in and get to know where your energy is lacking and where, where you get it. So we have positive experiences versus negative experiences. And so this is an energy flow assessment that we're going to do. Okay. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to, in a few minutes, I'm actually going to give you this handout and I'm going to give you some time to work on it. And so we, this is the energy flow assessment. It's going to look very much like the one in front of you where you're going to list your top energy giving or draining regular activities and engagements. And then you're going to draw a bar on the positive side or the negative side or in between. And I'll show you an example in a second. Um, actually, the next slide has, um, in two slides, we ha I have some examples to show you what it'll look like. What do you notice about your energy patterns? What accessible uh, changes can, um, can you make to improve your energy flows? Those are the questions that you're going to have. And again, I, you're going to get this handout in just a minute. So the step one is to list your top energy giving or draining regular activities. So, you know, Pick like 10 to 15 activities that you do on a regular basis that either give you or drain, give you energy or drain your regular energy. Okay. So you're going to think about that. You're going to make this list. Then what you're going to do in step two, this is where you're going to plot it. Something like this. Now, mind you, you might find that, you know, something gives you and takes away energy. So it could be, it could straddle both sides. This is for you to decide. I was just trying to give you like a, a visual of what it might look like, but this is what I want you to do. So you're going to list those 10 to 15 things. And then what I want you to do is I want you to kind of draw where they are and how they, how they affect what you do. And again, we're focusing on regular like tasks and activities. Okay. You know, for me, if I were to do it, it'd be like email one-on-one -on -one meetings, um, you know, making lunches for my kids, uh, folding laundry, going to soccer practice, writing, doing presentations. And so I, I could put those all plotted out because they're regular occurrences in my week. So I wanted to take a step back and really think about those 10 to 15 things that give or take away. And I want you to plot them because when you plot them, it's going to really help you because I don't think you, I know when I've done this presentation in the past, people are like, I never really thought about the fact that this takes away all my energy. I make dinner for my family every night and it's exhausting. How can I even bring that up a little bit? How can I eliminate it? Maybe rely on my partner a little more, maybe do takeout, I don't know. 
But this is what I'm hoping to get out of this is that you really see it visually, what your week looks like. Then what we're gonna do whoop, is you're gonna answer these questions. What do you notice? So this is just in response to the things I put, but what do you notice? What are those accessible changes? Where can you make some alterations? Okay. So what we're gonna do is, it's your turn. I'm gonna stop screen share for a minute. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share a document in the chat. One second. Here we go. It's just down downloading. Give it one second. And you should have an energy map uh, worksheet available to you. Um, if someone could just give me a thumbs up or an okay that we are able to open it and see it. Thanks, Ellen. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Lots of thumbs up. So what I'd like to do is it's about 615 Eastern time. Um, what I'd like to do is give you all about um, we're doing a zoom. So I'm going to give you like a good 10, 12 minutes to do this. So take, take some time to plot. I would really recommend making that list first, make that list of the 10 or 15 things, 10 to 15 things, and then, um, plot it on the, on the flow chart, the energy assessment worksheet, and then answer those questions. And then what we're gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna create some breakout rooms and you're gonna share and talk amongst, cause I find that again, radical collaboration is key here. And I have some prompts that we're gonna do the breakout rooms um, as well. And Matt, I'm hoping that's possible. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, and so um, with that, it's 616, let's come back. Actually, let's come back at 628, um, I'll, give a minute or so warning from there, but take some time to do that worksheet and then we'll come back. Sound good? Good luck. All right, let's come on back. I'm gonna just go right back to my slides. So if anyone, you know, just, just initially, what was that process like? And, and if you don't wanna share, that's okay. But if you feel comfortable sharing, I'd love to hear about, you know, just the process in general. Was it easy to pick 10 to 15 things? Was it, um, was it easy to actually be honest with yourself and put them in positive or negative or on both um, sort of uh, access, accesses? Um, you know, what was that process like? okay if you don't want to change it to share uh, we have an answer in the chat oh i see that there yeah uh, yeah depending on the context that's absolutely i mean it could change week to week right it could be you know works really heavy and i have the things that like i enjoy doing but i just don't have time for them because they would completely drain me <laughs> right now so absolutely this could you could do this exercise every single week um, I'm not suggesting you do that. All I'm asking you to do is really think about some small changes you might be able to make um, to give yourself a little bit more energy to go into things. Um, you know, I've learned for me personally, saying no sometimes has been really helpful. I'm 100% a yes person. I'm 100% someone that um, likes a lot of different things and likes to gain experience doing all sorts of stuff, but sometimes I got to say no. And so, you know, thinking about how that affects my energy, I just gave myself energy back into my regular activities because I turned down a presentation or I turned down teaching a class for a semester. So I understand that it was difficult, Paloma, and I appreciate you sharing uh, how you were feeling about that. It definitely 100% I support you. It depends on context time of year, um, <laughs> what week it is, 
um, and what the previous week was like and the next week will, looks like. So it definitely context is 100% accurate. But this is all I'm asking, just take take a step back and really think about your activities and 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 what you can do for yourself. Again, this is all about self-improvement. This is all about understanding yourself and raising that level of self-awareness. Any other thoughts before we jump into the pairs or triads? I can share. Um, oh. One thing that I noticed is that a lot of my energy zapping things I tend to do as soon as I wake up in the morning, like mm. a checking email and um, checking social media for news. Um, yep. Those tend to drain me and I, I do them right away. So I kind of start the day off uh, at a negative. Yeah. That's a really good um, observation for yourself. Um, I too do the same exact thing. Phone is right next to me when I wake up. I mean, my phone is my alarm, right? I open it up. How many emails do I have? Okay, cool. I literally check all my notifications and then I go right to Twitter, reading the news. Um, I go through my Google news and yeah, and I don't, I, I, I don't know that I could ever change that behavior. Um, but I, you know, if there's some way that you could delay doing that till a certain point of time, um, maybe when you're had a cup of coffee in you, or maybe in your peak time, um, you know, we remember we talked about those, uh, um, folk, um, flow prompting exercises. What is your peak time? Maybe that's where that goes. Or maybe that goes right before that peak time or something like that. I mean, again, you, it's, you're only going to be able to solve this. I'm actually just asking you, here are some act activities that can bring awareness uh, to how you're feeling with energy, but that's a really good observation. And, and certainly something that if you feel like it's bringing you down, you might rethink when you do that, or if you continue to do that at all. <laughs> Well, thank you um, to the two of you for, for sharing your, your reflections. So um, Matt, if you don't mind, if you could just make um, some random groups of two and three, uh, and all I'm asking just for a few minutes, we're only gonna do this maybe maybe five minutes or so. Um, if you're in a group of three or in two, let one person just talk and share their reflections. Don't say anything, just listen. And I, and I really would like it Think about active listening, really absorb what the person is saying and, and don't think about how you're going to react. Just listen, be a good active listener because this is again, this is a self-awareness exercise. So this person might be divulging information that can be really helpful to them long-term. And so take a step back and really listen and, and comment in any general way you think is, is, is something that you might notice or um, you know, as you take, take a look at what they've talked about, um, you know, just give some constructive feedback if you can, uh, and then, uh, switch roles. And then if you're in a group of three, switch roles again. Okay. So we'll do that for about five minutes. Um, so Matt, if you want to open up the rooms, um, and we'll, we'll do that for five. I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, here we go. So I hope that was a good exercise to just hear, you know, what other people were experiencing and, and sort of where their priorities are. And, and, and again, I just want to emphasize that it's, it's all about raising your self-awareness for the things that you're doing and what drains you and what excites you and, and gives you that energy. So it's really critical to just take a step back from time to time and really navigate um, your feelings and, and how you do your work and, and not being afraid, as I said before, to say no. Uh, we don't have to say yes to everything. And I, we were just talking in our group and I talked a lot about um, um, you know, how I decide what to say yes to and what to say no to. And for me, it's about taking a step back and looking at the value and, and what kind of impact it's going to have on the other things that I have going on. And, you know, I prefer to be really good at a couple things than, you know, eh, at all these things, you know, so really thinking about how to manage all the tasks and, and uh, responsibilities that we have. So I'm just going to jump right back in. I got about two, three more slides left. Um, and so I just want to talk about just the takeaways from um, doing this energy assessment um, uh, activity. And so, you know, it's all about finding that, the balance between your skills and the challenges of your work that can help you get into that state of flow. Uh, remember, we talked about that channel. When those, when those challenges and skills are met, you will find that flow and you're just going to be like, boom, you're for work state and you're just going to be doing whatever you're doing uh, really well and not realizing that time is actually passing. Um, ecosystem. 
environment are so critical. We talked about this, we talked about music, we talked about in, internal distractions and external distractions. Those are critical conditions for the state of flow and finding it and staying in it, uh, especially the distractions thing. So maybe turning off your email, um, I, I actually turn my phone off. My phone does not make any noise except the alarm in the morning. I do not have any noises on my phone. Um, that has been a big thing for me because that can pull me away from something I'm concentrating on. So starting to understand the conditions of distractions, internal and external, that can help you navigate finding your energy and, and really emphasizing the positive energy. Um, really noticing. This is the act of noticing. Remember when we went back a couple slides ago and I talked about how we're going to be emphasizing the empathy and the defined stage within design thinking digging in and knowing yourself, digging in and finding that empathy, understanding that self-awareness and noticing. I mean, think about this. Have you ever sat down and made a, a, list, a list of your 10 to 15 tasks and measure whether they give you energy or take your energy away? Probably not. This is, this is something that I, I really suggest you try to do on a regular basis because you it's going to help you notice things. This is a good opportunity to notice those blind spots. And maybe that's why I always, I'm always a big proponent of having conversations and sharing. If you can find someone you trust, it's so much more worth it than, than doing this alone. Um, and at the end of the day, this energy awareness can help you design your life, design the experience that you really want, find that meaning and purpose. And so with that, just in conclusion, just about design thinking, it, it works. I've been doing this for just over three years now. Um, it is, I have shared this with students. I've done these talks for faculty and staff. Um, I did one last February um, in this innovation uh, toolkit speaker series. Um, you know, so it, it does work, um, but I want to tell you right now, it only works if you try stuff, prototype, put yourself out there, make yourself a more informed decision maker. Those prototypes will give you information and don't be afraid to fail. Because that, embrace, that embracing of failure will give you information that you can improve yourself and improve that life design. Again, learning to empathize with yourself and understanding your audience and what they need and what you need. That energy is important. <laughs> you need energy. And so take care of yourself. It's about self, it's about self-awareness and building and improving your current situation. We already talked about this environment and ecosystem are unbelievably impactful for what you're going to do in your life design. And it's, it's all about understanding how you tick. It's about uh, what your dreams or ambitions are, uh, your worries and your concerns. Those all can be considered when you're designing your life. And, and that's really what um, needs to be done before you actually start to be mindful of that process and moving forward and making that progress. And so with that, I just wanna thank you all for the opportunity to come here and speak with you. I really enjoyed it. I had some great conversations. Um, this is my contact information. You can ask anybody who went to my last presentation. I will answer all emails. I will answer LinkedIn requests. I'm on Twitter, as I mentioned. <laughs> so feel free to, to connect with me there. Uh, I really mean that. Um, if there's anything I can do, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you have follow questions, I'm happy to stay and take a couple questions now. Um, but if you have questions, you think of something or you go back to your energy assessment or you're thinking about flow, reach out. I'd be happy to talk to you. I'm happy to jump on a phone call or another Zoom because that's what we do now. So thank you again. It was it was great. I'm going to stop the screen share um, now. So thank you again. Any questions? <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm happy to share the slides. Do you want me to send the, the slideshow? Um, yeah, yeah, I actually got a question about that. If you were okay. going to, I said I would check with you. Um, if you would like to, I send a follow-up email um, with you know the recording. Um, so if okay. you send it to me, um, then I can include that. Sure. Yeah, yeah thank you so me. much for that. Yeah, no problem. I, I will um, just send you a PDF. I'll just convert the, the Google Slides to a PDF. I'm just writing myself a note. I'll do that later tonight or tomorrow morning. Take your time. Yeah, thanks, Joe. This has been super awesome. Yeah, so thanks, thanks. for your And I guess maybe one question for you is like, with, and you kind of hinted at it, like where 
from like a like everyone's at home like there's a lot of distractions things like that like how do you like <laughs> semi manage <laughs> distractions and like this work at home like um you know i found a group you know what i did um i actually went into my office and i brought my standing desk home um and that was like a game changer for me um i brought the the standing desk that i have in, in my trinity office and that helped number one make me feel like i was working um i will also say once my kids went back to school that was a huge game changer from the, <laughs> from the distractions perspective um but i i, I try to be per, like i one of the things i did early on with working from home was i still woke up i still got dressed like i was going to work um that hasn't changed i mean got shirt sweater jeans on um that was a big thing because i wanted to make sure i still was in the the groove of working um and that was something i continued to do um you'll very rarely see me show up on a zoom call with like a sweatshirt on i just i dress like i'm at work um i take lunch around lunchtime um i'm pretty like militant about that and sh that structure it's important for me to stay on schedule um, and plus my days are full of meetings um I'm, I'm literally i wasn't exaggerating like 9 30 to about 5 i'm on zoom calls and meetings um, but what I was telling some of the other people is I, I actually try to integrate blocks in my schedule. I actually physically schedule blocks. And I'm talking about like two, three hour blocks, not every day, but like every couple of days. And that's my time to like read, catch up on email. Um, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I'll pick up my iPad. I'll play like a game on my iPad for a little bit. Just to, like, again, it's just to kind of chill my brain out. Um, that's been really good for me. And I find that like, I'm actually enjoying working from home more than I thought I would. And I'm like, big time extrovert. Um, I, I enjoy being around people, but find that Zoom has been okay for me. That's, that's really interesting. I am, like, no, that's great. I think it's, I've had some similar experiences. I think like keeping some habits there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually, what am I, like an introvert, extrovert, something like that. I'm like a combo of the, the two. Um, I forget which way it is though. I am um, too. <laughs> hey, there we go. And I think where it's been for me, it's, been like I am I like working from home but yeah it's that like people connection because it's such a weird dynamic like staying at the same desk every single time like yeah there's really not a ways to you know move around so yeah I, I if I take a phone call if I'm away from my zoom if I have like my airpods in and nobody's home I'll walk around my whole house just to move um that's been good for me too um if it's nice I will go for a walk if I can um you know, some days I'll start my day a little later and I'll work out before work, which is like, that's hard to do, but I try to, I try to pull it off if I can. The structure I think for me has been, been good. Yeah. I think keeping some structure of some sort is huge in all this, but yeah. well, cool. Well, thanks for, if there's any more questions, um, feel free to pop in, but and feel free to put them in the chat or email Joe to you directly. Obviously, um, if you miss his information, let us know, we can get it to you. Um, so thanks for everyone for coming and participating. Um, and Joe, thank you for sharing so much good knowledge and wisdom. I know Ellen and I were chatting, like we were learning so much. So thank you. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I know like, I'm like, what am I doing? I thought like all these negative <laughs> things all together. It's idiotic. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, no, this has been great. So thanks for doing this. Um, I really, I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's nice to meet you both. Everyone is nice to meet you. If there's any questions, use my contact information. I'm happy to respond. Say hi to Zoe for me. We go way, way back um, and uh, send her my best. I think I saw her pop on for a little bit, but. Um, yep, she was here for the beginning. Oh, good. All right. Well, if there's anything I can do, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you again for having me. Have a great night, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye.